Hi, my name is Melinda Beezer, and this is Family Incest, Part 4. Um, this is the fourth video I've made. Uh, you can uh, see my other videos, they're all posted up on YouTube. Um, a little bit of my background for those of you who haven't seen the other videos. Um, I am 37 years old, and I was raised by a pedophile, my father. And these videos basically are my way of putting out information that might be helpful to other people. I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of people wondering why I would make these videos, why in previous videos, if you watch the whole series, you'll hear me talking about the first time my father molested me. Um, you'll hear me uh, relating quite a few disturbing things. Um, these videos, of course, are posted up on my Facebook page. Uh, where family and friends can see them and I'm sure said family and friends are asking themselves what is she thinking? She's definitely went off the deep end. Why would I do this? Um, and my simple answer to that or the best answer I can come up with is simply uh, I'm trying to make something of my life so to speak. Um, I've lived through one abusive relationship after another throughout my entire life and I'm hoping that by sharing what has happened to me and sharing my history, as pathetic as it may seem, I'm hoping that parents and guardians of kids that are going through some of the same things that I went through will be able to make better choices with those kids to help by listening to what I have to say, help those kids get through it. If these videos help just one child get through what is a terrible ordeal, then it's all worthwhile to me. I just am trying to find meaning for my life, trying to make something of it, so to speak. Um, today, uh, we're going to be talking about verbal abuse. Uh, we've discussed uh, the sex abuse that I endured. Um, today, I'm going to be concentrating on uh, verbal abuse, and it's how damaging it can be. Um, I had the, I was unfortunate enough that I had two abusive parents. My dad uh, sexually molested me. My mother was verbally and physically abusive towards me. So I got to be, I drew the lucky card of having to get nailed from two different sides, so to speak. Um, I think the best way or to go into it, I mean, I remember instances when I was very young of my mom being verbally abusive. Um, but, you know, they were just, those episodes weren't that many and they were kind of strung out. My mom really didn't become extremely abusive until after she divorced my dad. Um, my parents' divorce, as I've said in previous videos, was very dirty. It was a knockdown, dirty fight uh, in which my mom uh, initially took my part after I accused my dad of sexually molesting me. She initially took my, uh, took, you know, was on my side, namely because I now realize she could use it against him in the divorce. Once the divorce was finalized and she could no longer use that to get at my dad, my mom became very bitter, uh, very angry, and she turned all of that towards me. And the thing about my mom is, uh, if something's irking her or annoying her, you know, something you do irks or annoys her, she won't tell you that what you're doing is irking or annoying her. Uh, she will just let it simmer over a period of time until she hits her bullying point and explodes. And what that resembles, or for me, uh, she would, something I was doing would, you know, annoy her or irk her. And so, you know, I didn't know, you know, she never told me. And so she would all of a sudden fly into rages, and she would hit me, and she would call me stupid, and she would tell me I was no good, that I was never going to amount to anything, over and over and over. And I've never feared anyone as much as I fear my mother. Uh, you know, the beatings themselves, I mean, it's not like she broke bones or anything like that or did any real serious damage to me with her. Luckily, she wasn't that strong. Um, you know, a few bruises and, you know, that would have been bad enough, but the verbal abuse cut much deeper. 
uh, being told that you're stupid, that you're not going to amount to anything, uh, that you're no good. These were the things I heard all the time. And when she would fly into these rages, uh, that it was much worse. I mean, her tirades were just soul-wrenching. And this is what I had to look forward to when I came home from school each day. It was hard enough to get through what my dad had done to me and finding trying to stay aground on that. But once I moved in with my mom, I was subjected to verbal and, and uh, physical abuse. And that just sent me spiraling further downward. And in my last video, I talk about suicide and uh, taking pills and trying to commit suicide. And I did. I did the whole drug overdose. I stole pills from my grandmother's uh, medicine cabinet and took all of them at school. And for some reason, I chickened out and ended up having to be taken to the hospital and getting to spend a week in the child psychiatric ward. Uh, although I was entered in on voluntary status, that was my own choice um, because I went, felt that I needed the help. Uh, and then I got into lockdown at the psychiatric ward and realized, yeah, this isn't going to help me. In fact, this is making it worse. And so I basically learned from that experience that I did what they told me to do. I told them what they wanted to hear. I lied my ass off to get out of that joint. And I realized a very important lesson from that was there's no way in heck I was going back. And so after my suicide attempt, my mom did back off for a while. Uh, my nearly killing myself, uh, you know, it did cause her to back off and lay off of me for a while. And so in that respect, my suicide attempt was a blessing in disguise. But, um, you know, I, example, my mom, you know, it wasn't that she wasn't raging at me and she wasn't physically abusive anymore, but I had made a suicide cassette in which I talked about the reasons why I was going, why I was committing suicide. I talked about all the things that were wrong. I talked about my pain. I talked about how much I hurt inside. I just laid it all on the line in this tape. And after I took the drug overdose, the shrink or psychiatrist that I was under the care of at the time, he gave the tape back to my mom. And my mom listened to the entire tape. And my mom took notes. I kid you not, the woman took notes. She took notes so that whenever there was a point in the tape that she did not agree with or objected to, she made a notation of it. And then when she was done listening to the tape, she told me everything, step by step down the list, of all the points she objected to in my suicide tape. She didn't hear my pain. She didn't hear my hurt. She didn't see any of that. What she saw was what she objected to. And she didn't agree to some of the things I said in the tape. And so here I am, you know, uh, at the Rose Inn, uh, so clearly depressed that I actually tried to take my own life. And she's criticizing the suicide tape. You know, to this day, it's mind boggling to me. Um, I just, I don't understand that at all. And as I've said before, you know, that's the situation I was in. Uh, no one believed that my dad sexually molested me. No one. Even my grandmother, who I was extremely close to, I, you know, who I spent all, a lot of time with growing up, she didn't believe me either. No one did. Absolutely no one. I was no good. I was crazy in the head. You know, uh. And I, that coupled with my mom telling me that I was no good, telling me that I was a liar, that I would never amount to anything, that helped to reinforce in my mind, eventually, I stopped believing in me. I stopped thinking that I was in the right. Maybe I was screwed up in the head. Maybe the whole abuse thing with my dad was just some kind of great, crazy delusion. And once you stop believing in yourself, then, what can I say, uh, you really, that really takes you down some very destructive paths. Uh, 
when I no longer believed in myself, when I had my had been called a liar, uh, told I was no good, when I'd endured that for a few years for my mom, I eventually decided I was no good. Uh, that maybe I was wrong about my dad. Maybe I was sick in the head. And so I eventually I made the decision to start going back down to my dad's house. I had stayed away from, from the ranch and away from him for years to protect myself, but after, the, after I tried to commit suicide, after being in the psych ward for a week and everything like that, I began to think that, yeah, I must be messed up in the head. Maybe, you know, maybe it was all just an illusion. Uh, maybe if I go back, things will be better. I mean, I've had all this counseling and everything. Maybe, you know, maybe it'll be all right. And so I decided that, you know, I would start going back down to my dad's visitations. A lot of that is due to the fact that I was so miserable living with my mom that uh, I needed to get away from her. So I had to choose the lesser of the two evils. And I'm sorry to say, getting mol sexually molested by my dad was actually the lesser of the two evils. Because what he did to me was wrong and disgusting. What my mom did to me, she literally stripped my soul. She took everything. She left me with nothing. I can't, there's just no one who has not been verbally, uh, verbally abused can understand the level of pain that you endure under verbal abuse. There's just no words for it. I mean, you feel like nothing. You are dirt. And I don't, you know, that being treated like that, being led to believe that I was no better than dirt by my own mother, someone that should have loved me who never did, uh, that left scars that are even deeper and more painful than being molested sexually by my father. And uh, we're going to later on as I, in further videos, I urge you to see the whole series, I will be discussing what happened to me uh, once I started going back to visit with my dad again. All right, thank you.